AMD is being very cautious with their hand for the RX 480. We previously just recently talked about the release of the card being on June 29th. The announcement was this week at Computex 2016. And they're being pretty cautious about their market positioning for Polaris 10, which we're gonna talk about here. Before that, all this coverage is brought to you by Rosewell and their new Cullinan case with tempered glass side panels. So the RX 480, that is the first as far as uh, rumors have indicated, plus official announcements, the first Polaris 10 GPU to be announced. It will be uh, more than five teraflops in compute performance. The reference card is still going with the blower fan, but it's got a small PCB, as you can observe in our photos of the card and of AMD's uh, live unveil of the card. So they're sticking with a sort of semi-smaller form factor. It's priced at $200, which means that it will be replacing the 380X, which operated at about 3.97 teraflops compute depending on which 380x you got so it will be replacing the 380x uh, the four gigabyte capacity 480 that's two hundred dollars the eight gigabyte one we're not sure yet but probably and this is my speculation here not official probably in the 250 dollar range amd doesn't have a lot of room to go higher than that because they're threatened by the 1070 once you start entering that mid-range high range market and they really can't go lower than it just because of cost so uh, this is where things get interesting and where amd kind of is in a tight spot and one thing here polaris 10 and polaris 11 neither is meant for the high end they're not meant to compete with the gtx 1080 they're not really meant to compete with the gtx 1070 though the 480 will certainly try to take market share away from the 1070 at a lower cost at perhaps a slightly lower performance and it should be lower performance because the compute is much different uh, though both companies drive a different amount of actual performance out of their compute and their shader array and everything like that. So these Polaris devices are not meant to fight at the high end. AMD is not going for a halo entry here. They're going for a consumer entry. They're targeting the 80 plus percent of consumers who buy 100 to $300 video cards. And that I think is a good move for them because uh, the 1080 is good, and even if AMD could compete with it directly today, it seems, given their market position, a good idea to allow the 1080 some room to breathe and compete where there's no competition right now, and that would be the $100 to $300 market because after that point, NVIDIA's got brand new releases. So then the 1060 becomes a concern, but we'll come back to that in a moment. As far as the RX 480, its positioning as a 4 gigabyte card at $200 seems okay. $250 at 8 gigabytes seems okay. Once you get beyond that point, it's too close to the 1070, I think, and people start looking at it as, I could spend 50, 60, 70 dollars more and get a pretty good 1070, and that's really not a ton of money at that point, depending on who you ask. So why is that relevant if they're gonna ship in the $250 range? Well, there's not a lot of room above the reference design for high-end AIB cards, so I would not expect a lot of serious overclocking potential, or at least, even if there's, it, maybe there is overclocking potential, let's say there is. I would not expect a lot of serious overclocking targeted cards from AIB partners that have greater phase uh, setups, better power design, that have uh, more advanced PWMs, or whatever the case may be. So th there's just not a lot of room there to grow after that point uh, because of the threat. So once you get below the $200 price range, it opens up even more for AMD because the current competition from NVIDIA at the very lowest end would be the 750 Ti. That's pretty dated now. That was Maxwell version one. That was before Maxwell version two. It certainly isn't Pascal. Uh, so that card is kind of edging off our charts as we test these new games. It's no longer hitting the performance metrics desired even at lower graphics settings. So that, I, I would say that's falling off the charts. There's room there for AMD to enter the market. After the 750 Ti, there's the 950, which when we reviewed it said was a very weird price and position, but now it makes sense because the 750 Ti is being phased out and the 950 has sort of taken its place from AMD, the R7, uh, 370 and the R9 380 non-X will be edged out by the 480 both of them and probably if there is one the RX 470 but we don't have any official confirmation on something like that just yet other than the rumors we've seen around the web 
So that's the market stack up. That's the position right now. In terms of performance, just to give you an idea, and these are not linearly comparable, but I, I want to throw out some numbers here. The GTX 960 four gigabyte card is priced at about $180. It has about two and a half to three teraflops of compute performance. That puts it a good deal below the 480 and raw compute, but that's not counting architectural things, algorithms, things like that. But raw compute is a good metric to at least base our initial assumptions on since we don't have a real RX 480. Uh, so the 960, I think, will sort of get edged out a bit by the 480, and the 380X certainly will be replaced by it. Then there's the 970. The 970 performs more comparably uh, to the, the higher range cards. It will be, of course, replaced by the 1070, but the reason I mention it is because of all the used models that'll be hitting the market and because of all the sales on the new models that are being dumped very briefly by the retailers before the usual video card price spike at EOL uh, because they're trying to get those people who thought they were going to buy two cards or SLI or whatever at the end of life and, and gouge the extra couple bucks that the retailers can at the end of that. So overall, AMD is being cautious with its hand. It is not playing to the high-end Halo market right now. They don't want that small percentage of users. They do, but not not for the fight that would be required uh, put up against NVIDIA at this time. Going for the mid-range. At the mid-range, NVIDIA will have the 1060, but it's not here yet. So here's the thing to look out for. AMD announced the release date as June 29th. I don't know if that's a yield thing. I don't know if it's a manufacturing thing. If this was a business decision, it seems an odd one. And that's because at that point, the 1070 will have saturated the part of the market that it is targeting for the immediate adopters. Of course, there's a huge amount of market left. This is you know, obviously a very small portion, but uh, they do lose that bit of the halo effect for the immediate launch of the 1070 and the 480. At the lower end, we look at things like the 1060. I don't know when that's coming out, but certainly the 29th is going to be getting a little bit closer uh, than I think AMD might have intended to be originally with NVIDIA's mid-range performer. In terms of the long-term prospects, Vega will be shipping with HBM2 in theory at some point. I don't know that HBM2 is really what AMD needs to get the edge that they that they want with these high-end cards like the 490 or whatever it may be. Maybe it's the 480X. I don't know the name of it. None of us really do. But they need more than HBM2. They need higher compute. Uh, they certainly, AMD has a good handle on async right now with the physical hardware on the die. NVIDIA's taken the algorithm approach to async compute. So they're in a good position there. DX11 is still huge. Uh, AMD's DX11 performance is so low that the gains to DX12, although large, are still putting them in some ways below or at parity with NVIDIA. So it's, it's, it's a very big fight for them to take. The 480 is a good place to start in the $200, $250 market. I think after that point, AMD will need to look into the even lower markets. So that'd be $100 to $200 so that they can try and edge out the remaining NVIDIA low end chips before the Pascal chips come. So a very sort of haphazard, quick, chaotically organized thoughts on the new AMD launch and the competition against Pascal. This is obviously, we're still in Taipei here. We haven't had a good chance to really dig in deep with the technical details, but we'll be doing that as launch approaches. So do stay tuned for more information on that. So as always, thank you for watching. Patreon link the virtual video. If you have thoughts on this, because none of us really have super hard data just yet, leave a comment below, start a discussion hopefully a civil one, and talk about what your thoughts are for positioning and AMD's market strategy here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.